All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Test Chamber. My name is Joe Raddick, and I am still, once again, your host for the show. Uh, joined with me today are three more developers, one of which you have already uh, have already been graced with his lovely voice. That is Ben Truman. Uh, also joined with us today is uh, Bjorn and Sean. Say hi, guys. Hello. Um, Bjorn and Sean, in that order, why don't you guys just introduce yourselves again really quick, say how long you've been on the team, and uh, what you guys do around the Black Mesas. Well, I'll start with me, though, then, Bjorn. I've been around on this team since uh, 2005, so I am one of the long-timers, basically. And mostly what I've been doing is prop art, technical art, conversions, and uh, some texture fixes and stuff like that, basically. All right, and hi everyone. I'm Sean. I've been on the team for two years. Um, I'm a level designer, and I also do. I'm the community manager, so I do a lot of community work, and I, uh, I'm mostly a level designer. And Sean uh, was uh, Sean was also before he started on Black Mesa was the guy behind on rail and surface tension uncut. Indeed, so, uh, that was me. So you might have heard him. You might have heard of that name via him. So anyway, so we are going to pick off pick up where we left off. Uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, uh, with Office Complex. Um, I don't know if we're going to make it through the entirety of this chapter in this episode. We may break this up into two, um, but we'll find out. So uh, let's get started. And let me switch it to this. Yep, there we go. All right, so previously on Black Mesa, um, uh, Gordon causes the Resonance Cascade, fights his way up to where we are now. Long story short. You put on a really good spoiler there. Mm. I think things are about to get more complex. Mm. <laughs> See, the other thing is, Chon is our, our resident punsmith. Um, and not very, not very well appreciated for it. No. <laughs> No, no, no. We love you, Sean. We absolutely do. I feel sorry for that guy. Yeah, I just wanted to say hi, and the barnacle's like, no. So, so um... It's very hungry, barnacle, uh, at that. I mean, this, that guy's like three times the size of the barnacle. Mm -hmm. So, um... I'm gonna start with Ben here, and... Gosh darn it. Should've had, a. Uh, ah, forgot something but I will make up for it later. Um, so Ben, um, so do you have anything to say that you wanted to start say before we got started with Office Complex? Um, uh, not really, there's there's a lot of extra, I wish I could see, I mean, did I can, are you doing a screen share right now? Because I can't see anything. Uh -oh. Okay, yeah, so, so this web version of Skype does not have screen share. Okay. I'm gonna just function say it out. now. Skype has been having issues for us for the past hour or so, so that's why we're having these issues. Yeah, um, I'm not gonna. I mean, I uh, I will try to keep up, or at least try to figure out how to like uh, sign into the just like the regular application. You should really know our game well enough by this point to be able to talk about it, even if you can't see it. Yeah, no, I know I can, yeah. but I want to. Uh, I want to be able to like pick up on things that are actually going on, or like, you know, be able to direct Joe back to see something or do something. Um, <laughs> I definitely know the game. Uh, I, there's not much to add about that barnacle scene. That's uh, essentially the same scene as it was in the original game, although we added some uh, cheeky humor. It's like when you click him at the end uh, after you uh, start to rescue him. He's got some uh, funny, some funny lines including one about scintillating conversation that is uh, drawn from a trip I went on with a friend of mine, like a road trip up through Canada, through New York. There's, so, um, what's popping up now, and I'm gonna make my way over to it, is the emergency broadcast signal. Uh, this is a, this was this might sound familiar to a lot of people. Um, when we first started teasing the Steam release, Steam release of the game in um, uh, in was it January, uh. we uh, we first released this on BMSRF.us. We released this 
uh, we release this emergency broadcast signal, and I wish that I had brought Kevin or Hubie into this, um, because they were the ones who actually worked on it. But as I understand the story, and I'll, if, if we're doing a two-part office complex, I'll have Kevin in next week. Um, as I understand it, Kevin and Hubie actually decided to, um, uh, decided to do this at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning, the day before we actually launched it, and he knocked this out in, like, an hour. Um, yeah, uh, and we all woke up kind of to... missing. He got that, uh, done so quick. Yeah, and, and we, he, he kind, and we kind of all woke up to it one day, and we woke up to Hubie going, uh, guys, we just got 600,000 views on our website. <laughs> and we're like, <laughs> wait, why? And then we, he explained this, and it was like this really simple e e EMS, or EVS, and it was just, it was chilling to listen to. And um, guess who 312 is asking if, this is, if the emergency broadcast wasn't part of the mod? It was not part of the mod. It was, uh, uh, this is part of the, um, the Steam version. And if you guys have anything you guys want to say when you pop in uh, that you see or like hear about, just go ahead and chime in. Yeah. Um, we did just. All right, I just fixed my. Uh, I just fixed the Skype problem, so I'll be able to actually follow along now. One of the things I found quite interesting over my time in the team is some of our best ideas and some of our best designs actually come from sort of spur of the moment impulse decisions, kind of like Kevin's EAS broadcast. Which he kind of just had the idea and he went for it and it turned out really successfully. Yeah. There are a few yeah. things I can think of where we've actually just sort of had an idea and run with it and then it's turned out much better than, you know, sometimes when we plan things for a long time and spent a long time thinking about them. And I'm trying to think of what, what were some of the other ideas that we had? I, I mean, is there any that, like, stood out beyond the, the broadcast signal that made you oh. go, like, I think, Ooh, I think it's just kind of one of, the, one of the ways that this team generally works is that, you know, because we're, uh, because we have in the past, you know, been working only in our spare time and um, it kind of, often if you have an idea that excites you, it can inspire much better work than, you know, if you're not, if you're thinking about it a lot more and stuff like that. Yeah. This is, this is one of the scenes that we added context to it because it was a, a scenario where you just saw a guy who's just inexplicably waiting behind a chain link, like locked behind a chain link fence with uh, no real reason or, um, you know, he doesn't do anything to like let you know uh, why he's there or what's in store for you. You know, behind that wall. So we added that. We created that scene and we released it as a a radio play initially. It's still available on the YouTube, but it's like cut down to like 17 seconds for some reason. It's very very short. It's cut prematurely. Do we have the? Uh, if you have the original, we can get it up on our on our YouTube, our new one, and get that up. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's no real point in. You know, it's. It was just at the time we put it up because it was a, uh, just a, it's just something to do because it was you know like the Black Mesa, the Iron Wall or the the Iron Curtain where just like nothing was ever. You know, there's no a silent uh, curtain. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's like nothing ever being released, and so Kevin and I put together some of the radio plays just so that we could let have you know some kind of trickle of information to let people know that we were still working on it. And I've heard, I've actually heard some of the other radio plays like outside of the game, and they're some of them are actually kind of funny. Others are kind of like mm, grimish. I'm not sure what which ones you're talking about. I'm trying, I don't I'm trying to remember. I'm just I'm trying to remember specifically, but right now I'm focused on getting through uh, through this. That's the amazing cool. labyrinth of offices. Yeah. Way out of the way. Did you see the uh, the hound eye in front of the TV? Yes, yeah. we got that right when you left. Um, is there anything you wanted to say about the hound eye watching TV? Oh, no. No, it's just making sure you... I still love that scene, anymore. though. It's so cool. I, I, I think it's funny just because it's like, here's this new thing, here's this old thing. Um, this is uh, this plastic bin was made at my request because this scene was just absolutely... Uh, just unforgiving. I, I've, I've always thought our turrets were just like a little too uh, ruthless, but um, 
we implemented that big plastic pushable crate there because this turret was just absolutely shredding all the cover that was available. So yeah, even that metal thing, there was, uh, there was absolutely no hiding in this area because the turret could see you behind crates and would shoot and like, you know, destroy the crates, turn them into splinters, and you were just, you'd be torn to pieces in seconds. There's like absolutely no, uh, it was just too hard to get through this area with like, uh, with any help at all. Yeah, I find it interesting, actually, Joe, that your your impulse was to shoot the turret to kill it because my the way I've always played that and like felt that it intuitively played out was I always run to turn the power off, just do dodging behind cover rather than shooting the turret. I do the same thing. This is actually the first time I've ever seen someone uh, shoot the turret like that. Yeah, uh, likewise. Oh, uh, see, I just I I see it it's shooting at me, so I'm going to shoot back. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I think it's like mostly because Joe is the less cerebral type. Yeah. <laughs> Might be. That's me shoot now ask questions later nice well, I walked in the big circle but I'm unlocking all the shortcuts just in case I think this guy has Kevin and I gave that guard there's a did you bring the guard along with you I should have I'm not sure where he is now he's got... that's why you're able to unlock all those shortcuts and so you can bring that guard with you yeah that's a see, he should have some kind of like you know special dialogue for when you open that door and uh you know he, he like he says something for you when you climb up in the vents like okay we'll be you know i'll be down here <laughs> and he's, we just uh we added some stuff i actually think that we should instead of having the vorts teleport in here uh after you get the magnum i think we should have i think there should be some this is this red hallway with all these like offices closed off it'd be a really cool opportunity to have like a zombie attack or something in this area rather than like uh introducing the vorts that early because i think they're best used in that uh in that cubicle battle as their mm -hmm. big intro, I think it's a really yeah. effective way to introduce them. It just seems very uh, boring to kind of have them appear in there. Yeah, I think that Vortigaunt scene in the cubicles is definitely one of the most memorable parts of Office Complex in terms Absolutely. of Absolutely. Absolutely, because it's like, it's an area, it's like a realistic setting. You have to use your environment to your advantage to like, you know, specifically, uh, you know, like come up with tactics to defeat those particular enemies. You know, it's just, uh, yeah, I don't think they should be introduced there. I think they should, still have their their moment in the sun later on i've always liked the vaults the most in this chapter sort of out of any in the game because i think the way they play with the lighting and the sort of cubicle scenes around the offices is just mm -hmm. really cool with the green dynamic lighting and stuff like that right and yeah and they're just their their combat is just so well suited for for this this kind of environment with like long corridors and pathways yeah. you know? so it's like you've got to dodge left and right you got to stay out of their way um, this game really good in terms of the original in um the way that they direct your attention is extremely effective here to get like really good scares. Like they will, um, they will throw a barnacle at you to try to keep your attention upwards towards the ceiling, and that's when they're going to toss a head crab like out from behind a desk or like a hound eye from around a corner. You know, they're constantly playing on your, on like the player's anticipation, and uh, that's like that makes for some really good scares and like really nice tension in this level because it feels like yeah. a lot of the. A lot of the things happening are, you know, it's, it's like the designer is playing against, you know, like they, they're they playing with the player, you know, they, <laughs> it's effective that way. So one, one of the things I guess I could talk about here in regards to this particular scene is I did a lot of the balancing for the retail version of the game trying to fix up some of the problems from the mod version. And one of the enemies which got worked on the most from retail, uh, from the mod version, sorry, for retail, was the Vortigons. Um, because there, was, there were a lot of people who didn't like the way the Vorts were done in the mod version, even though they had their upsides. Uh, you know, they were very fast firing. Uh, you, once they'd started charging a shot, it was really hard to dodge it, and you were almost guaranteed to take damage. So we kind of went back to the more Half-Life 1 style, where it takes them a bit longer to charge it, but they're, they're very accurate once they, they've charged it. Um, and the idea is that, you know, like, like Ben was saying, in areas like this in Office Complex, they're actually really fun to fight, because you've got so many different ways you can dodge them. But you, you absolutely have to dodge them to avoid taking damage, especially because we powered up the zap. Um, so this was one of the this was one of the chapters where, when I was uh, adjusting the balance for the retail version, I was really playing through this chapter a lot because it's, I think it's one of the most even, even though it's um, not ooh, not ooh, particularly ooh, combat intensive yeah. compared to the later <laughs> chapters. Supposed to die there. Fun. <laughs> Sorry, Chan, didn't mean to cut you off. That was. No, oh, no, that's fine. I, I pretty much finished. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> I actually I, I I remember playing with. Oh, don't videos. forget the scientists in that back room. I remember this yeah, chapter a lot. I'm trying to find where everyone is. 
office yeah, complex is in they in were, the, uh, uh, there was a cubicle right where those zombies attacked you. That's there was that is also one another, oh, another thing that surprised me a bit because I didn't think I was alone on that when I played the original Half Life game. That but people are definitely NPC hoarding. Quite a lot of people do that and they yeah. get everyone yeah. to one area. It's I don't think we have any added NPCs in Office Complex either. Like every scripted sequence or every character in here. Oh, there's one scientist added to a scripted sequence at the very end, but you can actually, yeah, almost get this many. You can hoard this many NPCs in both versions, which is just <laughs> ridiculous. I'm kind of you. Joe, doing... smash the vending machine. Come on. I'm working. Oh, that's another thing I remember from. This was like the real. Uh, this level in the original game just had the most responsive environments to combat as well, including vending machines and cubicles and all these, like, you know, ceiling tiles. There's so much environmental destruction that you can do in this yeah. chapter. That's really cool. Because that's, that's like, I love games like, uh, what's that one, Time Crisis? Where, or, what's the one where, not where you have the pistol, but where you have the automatic weapon? And you're like, you're just like, you're just raking a mall with like bullets, you know, trying to like defeat these bad guys. And you're just like, uh, you know, the bullets are destroying everything in the environment. That has like the same effect here, where just there, there's a lot of stuff you can shoot and a lot of stuff that responds to you. Is this the scientist that you were talking about, the one that's being added? Or the one that's no, it's in the, the We Can Still Climb scene. It was originally just a guard talking to you, but I added a, a scientist in there to kind of have some more back and forth dialogue. Um, guess who three two one is asking which weapons are getting remodeled? I have a feeling that's because I'm using a modded uh, three fifty seven that I'm going to be showing off in a future community spotlight. Um, it's like over Ocelot's gun. Uh, so this this three fifty seven is not this is not our stock three fifty seven. I don't have the uh, the three fifty seven. Uh, I don't know who the author is off the top of my head, but I will make a Twitter and a Facebook post about it showing it off. Uh, to compensate for that, so you've actually probably seen me use it for a while I now. Um, I really like it; paper. it's fun, Don't you? Um, and I'll be showing it off more That's later on. It does look good. But uh, in terms of which weapons are being remodeled, you're going to just have to wait and find out. Uh, you might actually find out during. You one left of these two series. NPCs. You left two NPCs back in the uh, back in the cubicle area. The, the... I've actually, Joe, I've actually already disclosed that information somewhere on our forums, so maybe people can go and hunt for it if they're interested. Oof, Let the googling begin. Yeah. Challenge. Uh, oh, it's gonna be bad. Yeah. Uh, you know, have Got you it. ever... Oh, had, wait, you know, he's smoking, he should be to... dead by now. <laughs> Do you know the other oh, way to defeat those turrets? You go through the, um... Yeah, there's... The security events, yeah, and they added that But we already know, this is the... Joe way of handling turrets, basically. I'm going That's through right. it. I'm just going to shoot them. I'm, I'm the type of person who's going to go through and shoot the turrets. I, I remember the first time I played this, and I had, I think, all the NPCs up to that point, and they just all got mowed down mm -hmm. by that target, and I was yeah. so sad. <laughs> Hail a gunfire. One, one, one of them made it through. We got, we got one. He's not, looking, he's not looking good. And is that the, the Magnum guard, or is that the regular pistol guard? Ooh, regular yeah, you got the weaker of the two. Right, good luck. Good luck. We'll do it, buddy. We can do it. I believe in us. Dr. Freeman. Yeah, what? I, I, I just wanted to point out that I kind of like this area, just like... I, this is one of the, this... Architecture wise, I really liked this part of Office Complex. Mm -hmm. There is a smooth cinder block wall up by the next guard that you meet that I remember just being like awestruck by the first time I saw it, which is like so silly, you know, just like a curved wall. So, with, 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 with regards to that, that scene with the two vaults there, do you know what the uh, two vaults are called in the editor in Hammer? No. I, I found this out, oh, I found this I, out while I was trying to fix the AI in that scene and it amused me greatly. You told me and I don't remember it off the top of my head. I have not heard yeah, it though. The, the, those two vaults are called Bert and Ernie. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, that was the best. Yeah, you were you were mentioning that a while ago when you were balance passing. And we have yeah. we have a. Heck, I had not uh, been I told we, that. That was a couple that was, more. That made my day. We have a couple more NPCs that are funny named. Um, surprise me. Can't remember. What are you still doing? Yeah, I think the I think the three tentacles are called something like pinch, poke, and prod. <laughs> yeah. uh, last bit. This is kind of one of the things you don't hear very often as a prop artist because you're not very much in the hammer and doing something on the map, basically. 
Oh, come with me. That's there the curved wall there. that I was talking about, by the way. That one right there. This one? The, yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, that, that one. We made that guard. We found it was a, a better scene if that guard came running around the corner to to meet you instead of just waiting behind the door when you open it. It just kind of made it seem more alive or like you had more of a purpose there. That's another example of just how we make very, very small touches on the scenes to actually give our characters context. And this was a very memorable scene from the original game. This cafeteria with head crabs raining down on you. That was. Awesome. For the uh, remain, remain NPCs go. They get stuck behind it. Oh. You, so you have to go through that, um, back, that remember, area. Uh, open I keep, up the door I'm just so back. used to like, oh yeah, where's my NPCs? Oh wait. It's another character that we. <laughs> there aren't oh, really well, any other parts in our game where you can get a posse like that, is, that, is there? No, there's not. And it, yeah, it's uh, it's disappointing. There's not really a lot of opportunities for. A lot of uh, dynamic response yeah. rules and interactions too. Like this is the level where your NPCs are going to run into the the widest range of, of bad guys, and so this is really where a lot of uh, the response rules and chatter work comes out to shine. That's one of the only instances you actually get to see it. So, uh, I so when I'm... I when I when I was first acquainted with Black Mesa, it was as a fan, and that was one of the things I really loved about Office Complex and the way that it had been handled was the it all felt very dynamic and alive because the NPCs were responding to the different environments, yeah, and you can do it how you like. Yeah. It's very fun to hear them like comment on the world around you. Like uh, the scientists have this great response when they see a zombie, where they go, "Wait, maybe we can reason with it." <laughs> <laughs> I love, you know, I love as, hearing that. As as somebody who would probably say that, yeah, 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 that's yeah, that, right. Yeah. And then the the uh, guards call the bull squids dinosaurs when they see it. It's like, holy crap, it's a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> At a first um, glance, when that thing charges you, perfectly understand you would call it a dinosaur. <laughs> yeah. So, here's a little design touch you can see here. Um, if you look down that corridor, um, it was really hard to line up this. Uh, I don't know. There we go. Right. Actually, I, I, was, two, I was on the wrong I, side of the button. Okay. If you look down the hallway, it was really hard to line this thing up originally, and so I suggested putting that little black strip there on the ceiling across from the two vents because it helps you orient that uh, moving meat rack. Um, like when it's like really far down that hallway, it's just like the depth perception is kind of buggy. You know, it's like hard to line it up perfectly. So it's just like a very tiny touch, along with also that shelf that collapses while you're climbing mm -hmm. through there, offers you know an easier way for you to get back up onto the the, into also... the vent structure. From a design perspective, the collapsing shelf one, not only is it like a natural checkpoint, but two, it also kind of brings to the attention that maybe you need to be doing something in this area, or you need to you you will need to be doing something in the area right. soon. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that platform also automated, so it just went back and forth constantly yes, in the original game? Yes. Yeah, exactly. It was a switch that you turned on, yeah. and it would just and then it would just be going back and forth, back and forth. It was also was very annoying the, um... in the original. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. I think that was one of the design goals of a lot of the puzzles in Black Mesa was to stop stop the puzzles from being either you can do this by yourself or um, rather just press <coughs> the button and the puzzle is solved. So we, I, I know that during the redesigns of a lot of the early chapters, there were there was a lot of um, careful thought put into how to how to maintain this sort of same design for the puzzles, but have it so that it's more than just pushing a button and getting a result. So you'd have to do things like find the valve in that puzzle and then you know, actually manually place the shelf rather than mm -hmm. in the original, like you said, where you could just do it automatically. Yeah, for sure. And this, uh, that's a crazy scene. I remember this area from the the original game was such a... I would like to see more kind of like smaller areas in our vents like this, just to kind of break up those like long slogs. It'd be cool if you went through these, you know, kind of... Uh, I don't know what you call it, like a like a hub, you know, <laughs> like a, a ventilation hub at certain points so you weren't just always walking down like an endless corridor of vents. I think with when I first went through that, I was I forget why, but for some odd reason I had to rush through that area. And I actually ran, like I was just I'm like, alright, gotta get up that ladder, gotta get in the vent. I forget why I was why I was in a rush. But I did that, and then suddenly, like, it exploded, and I just was, like, thrown backwards, and it was like, reset! Oh, <laughs> like, dang it. This scene, this is one of my, the scenes that I like to show off as an example of 
changing it from the original game with how we how I put in this this scientist here to kind of like show concern so that the 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 guard gets to look like the real hero or the real uh, tough guy in this like scripted sequence here where originally it wasn't presented with that much drama or that much uh, there wasn't didn't sound like there was much at stake but the scientist helps add more weight to that scene. Don't worry, sir. I'll keep you covered. Do this. So sorry. Yeah, All right, three guards, All right gang, are. let's go. Yeah. <laughs> So you got a little okay. army. So, so yeah. um, I'm going to mention this now, but I, I and I will preface it with the fact that I haven't really prototyped it. But I had a couple of ideas for uh, small single-player game mode things uh, based around squad AI. So you would you would be able to you'd start off with like each guard would have like a different weapon, and uh, you would. You could only take like up to two guards or something like that, but you have a choice of four, and then you had to go through this campaign with the guards that you need, and you needed to figure out which ones needed to come and which ones couldn't. But then, so what happens if you choose the wrong guard? I uh, it I the way I had it in my head was that certain guards did certain pathways, or like if you brought a scientist, you got through certain things. Right. So it'd be like, a, hey, here's a shorter, easier way with no items, but here's a more complicated way, with more enemies, yeah, and more, you know, more uh, payoff. That would, I mean, something like that would be interesting. I mean, really, when you get down to it, though, it would just be between having a guard and a scientist, and, like, who's going to offer you the most in the end. Yeah. Like, if the scientist can open the doors, or if the, the guard can offer you, like, yeah, cover it's, fire. It's, it, was, it, it was kind of jumping between, like, I wanted to make sure everyone had roles. So you can kind of choose, like, you could choose a guard that that used an MP5 but did other things. And so it was, it it it's still in its, like, infant stages, but I came up with... I would, you know it would be easier, Joe? Like yeah, ago. I mean, like, it's a, it's a good idea. I think it would be easier, though, if you just made it the difference between the two NPCs, because don't the guards have, like, some kind of code from, like, a remnant from Half-Life 2 where they pick up weapons that they find? I mean, we have... Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I think I, th I think so. So that might be something. There is response rules for that kind of stuff already in do, the game. So I don't know, but just thought I'd throw that teaser out to see what people thought. Could be worth looking into. It sounds like but it can sorry, be interesting. Sorry, dude. No, no. Hang on. You got this. You got it, dude. Put him out of his misery. <laughs> oh my god. I do think I'm some not, of the I, effect of this scene is lost. I shoot turret. I shoot turrets, not humans. Oh, well, sorry, dude. I remember the first, the, the original version of that, I think, is much scarier because you're looking up at him and he falls past you. I don't really think that looking down on him in that scenario is like, uh, doesn't deliver the same oomph as, as the original. It, it definitely, when I went through it the first time, I was just kind of like, uh, I was like, oh crap, we have to, like, I could, I could go save this guy, and then it was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work out so well. We did set it up though, uh, so that yeah, the the elevator is supposed to like crack and like break off and fall on top of him as he like plummets down that pit. It's so unfortunate. So Joe, we've now hit. We've got hostiles. That's one of my favorite chapters, actually. That was like, it's four forty. So um. I guess what we'll do is we'll, we'll end it here then, and we'll do We Got Hostiles next. Because um, that went a lot quicker than I expected, and actually, we went longer than I expected, but it took less time than I expected. <laughs> it, it's, it's a bit weird. I was hoping to do it, it for 30 minutes. I was hoping to do it for 30 minutes, and then stop it at 30 minutes, but then it was more than 30 minutes, but we're done before I realized that it was, I don't know, it's... It's weird. So, do you guys have any closing remarks that you guys want to do for this before we start? Before uh, before we end it right now. Uh, uh, I'm always room? interested. Oh, sorry. Uh, does anybody else have something? No, not really. No, Office Complex was never a really that uh, lengthy chapter, if I remember correctly, from the original game either. You could run through it very fast. Is there anything in particular that you made special for that map? Bjorn, that you can think of? Oh, uh, that would have to be all those cubicles, and uh, which, yeah. if, if a lot of stuff the happens kids. in that fight scene, there's uh, like shitloads of stuff everywhere. Right, yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah, yeah but those were tedious to uh, make in the original uh, when we did them. 
And if you are interested in the multiplayer side of things, we do have a, uh, there is an office complex based map uh, called DM Office that is relatively uh, fun and more importantly, absolutely chaotic because there's a, yeah. glown, there's a glown in there. So, um, oh, oh. So, and it was uh, made by a programmer. Yes, which makes it even more fun. Uh, and I say, I say Glown, I know it's the Gluon, every time I say Glown, someone goes, but it's not the Glown, it's the Gluon, or the Egon, and I'm like, it's the Glown to me, because... It's, it's obviously during, the Glown, you people so, are all completely wrong. During, during my interview for Black Mesa, somebody mentioned the Glown gun, and I was like, what's the Glown gun? And I thought they were saying Clown gun at first, uh, and that's why I was like, really, I was questioning it, and I was like, so why, like, what are you talking about? And they're like, oh... One of our programmers uh, can't spell and spelled Gluon Glown, oh, and yeah. uh, we can probably all guess which one that is. Um, <laughs> and uh, and so ever since then, I'm like, all right, Glown <laughs> works for me. So I call it the Glown Gun. Um, I believe it's called the Glown in code, and we also yes, have grenades what, instead of grenades. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you ever it's have a chance, if you ever are graced with the uh, the internal coding of, of Black Mesa. We have grenades and uh, glounds. Oh, wow. That is amazing. Like, like crap. So, uh, yes, we, we probably, I think everyone everyone in this call no, probably knows knows which programmer it is and yeah, no one's yeah, surprised. So, um... Good stuff. <laughs> so, uh, any other closing remarks? I, and I'm always interested to hear stuff? what people think about the the weapon switch that, that was implemented in Office Complex. Um, I, I personally think that there's something lost by just handing out the Magnum that early, and uh, I kind of like the the original idea of like the contrasting firepower of like a shotgun that spreads out and is only effective fighting primarily Vortigaunts and uh, zombies, which uh, you know like zombies have to be close to you, and then Vortigaunts shoot in like long straight lines. And I thought that made for real dynamic combat. And I just always want to know like if people really stick to the idea and think that the Magnum is better, or if they just play through and don't remember that it was different in the original way, or if they think it's like a, a design change for the better. I just I'm always interested in hearing about that. Well, from from everything I've seen on the forums and stuff like that, I think that that decision to switch the shotgun for the Magnum. Uh, was definitely one of the most divisive design decisions in that mm -hmm. chapter. Um, I know some people really like it. I quite like it personally, and some people dislike it. Um, I guess I guess you could say it, it gives you a more logical progression in terms of weapon size because you go from you know using the small pistols up to the I think the shotgun and then the no it's the MP5 first sorry and then the shotgun after that so you kind of get a logical escalation. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess I guess like you said the original kind of subverted that by having it so you got the shotgun first. So I think there's. I think there's arguments on both sides, and I guess you can't please everyone, and it was something we tried to do a bit differently to the original at the end of the day. I think it yeah. works. I think, yeah. I think it... I mean, it's it's kind of like when, you have, when you're working with a game this old, this well-known, this played, um, that you're going to get opinions on everything, so... I think, I think yeah. the 357's fine, um, but I'm not necessarily, like, in the camp of it's the best thing ever, so... So, um, that's gonna be I'm quite this. for that change, though. It, it did a lot uh, to the progression, as John mentioned it. I'm definitely for that change. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So, so um, if there's nothing else you guys want to say, um, that is going to be it for this week. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, again, my name is Joe Raddick, and we will see you... I haven't decided if we're going to be doing this weekly now or every other week like we have been, um, so stay tuned. You'll just follow us on Facebook and Twitter, or even follow this channel and you'll get an email notification whenever we go live. Uh, so uh, Facebook, Twitter, or this, um, and you'll know when the next episodes of The Dust Chamber come up. So uh, thank you everyone, and we will see you next time. Bye everyone. Yeah, bye, bye guys. Thanks again.